Hey guys. So this is a really quick word that I'm going to give to you guys and give you your day back. Um, so I hope this encourages someone, um, somebody, even if it's just one person, this word is not for everybody in this season. So again, take this word to God, take me to God, as I tell you guys with every prophetic word, because it's so easy for us to be discouraged and hear a word and latch onto it and it's not our word. So just take it to God, let him confirm, um, but let's get into it. So this morning, every time I'm starting work, guys, I always make sure that I, let's just back some. Okay, I always make sure that I bring my Bible with me. This is my amplified Joyce Meyer everyday Bible. I always make sure I bring one of my Bibles with me, um, my journal, whatever I need for that morning. I just bring it to my desk with me. I work from home. So in between calls, in between emails, in between me researching accounts or projects or whatever, I'm like reading a devotional or looking at my Bible or, you know, just looking for God in everything. So I grabbed my Bible this morning, opened it up. It opened up to a uh, second King. So I knew that it was a story about Elijah and Elisha. I did not read it right away. I just left my Bible open to it so that when time permits, I could read it. Right. So, and I'm giving you guys that for a reason, just to show how strategic God is. So as my day began to uh, move forward, I, many of you guys know that the Lord is having me move to a different state in a different city when my lease is up here in Texas in June. Okay. Unless there's a ram in the bush and God is going to be like, just kidding. There's a ram in the bush. You're not moving. I am moving. Okay. So, um, as soon as the Lord confirmed that to me, uh, I began to look at apartments and homes to rent and so forth. Some people think renting is a waste of money. I do not. I need somewhere to live. So if that means me renting, I'm okay with renting. That is not a waste of money to me if it's putting a roof over my head. So I began to look at places and so forth. That's already set in stone. The Lord led me to the complex that he wanted me to move into. Uh, so that's already done. I finalized all of that um, the end of February. So that's set. And with this complex, uh, the internet, you pay through your rent each month, right? So in this particular city and state, I don't know anybody in this city or state, okay, I've never even been to this city before, okay? So this is not an apartment that I've seen in person. I've just seen it online, okay? Um, but the Lord led me there. And I, again, everything's set in stone with me moving, my paperwork, my apartment, everything's already done for me, okay? Um, and I'll give that testimony of how God worked that out in another separate word that I'm going to release of just how good God is and how strategic he is when he's wanting you to relocate and move and so forth. I'll do a separate word on that whenever God releases me to do so. I just don't want to move ahead of him, but I'm not like some prophetic voices where everything is a secret child. We, we, we overcome by the word of each other's testimony. So I will be sharing that with you guys. Whenever God releases me to share that information with you, you will know the city and state that God is moving me to. I ain't scared of y'all. Okay. So I'm not afraid of telling someone the city and state that I'm, I'm living in. Um, I'm not one of those people that's everything is the secret and God is saying, be quiet all the time. And da, 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 da. Nah, God will lead me when to release that, but it will be something that I do share with you guys. Okay. So that's all set. My internet is included in the rent, right? But it's through, of course, a separate company. So when I first, um, my shoulders feel so tight. When I first um, did all of my paperwork for this apartment complex, I... The, the person helping me, my consultant, sent me the information for the internet. And he's like, you can go ahead, set the internet up, or you can wait until it comes closer to your move date. He's like, you still have a few months, so it's not important, but go ahead and set that up whenever. You can do it now or you can wait. I'm not a person who likes to wait. I am a planner. I like to organize and be have everything in order if I could, if I can, right? So I signed up for the internet. The start date isn't until June. For the internet provider. It was super easy. He sent me all the links and whatever I needed, started an account with them, set that up, right? This morning as I'm at work, I get an email and the email is from the internet provider. And the, the email pretty much says, we're sorry about how the service has been recently. Um, we totally apologize. And as a token of our appreciation, 
Um, I want to extend this $25 gift card to you just to say we're sorry and that we really appreciate our customers and that this is not, you know, they were just apologizing for the interruption in internet service, right? And they send me a $25 gift card. Now I'm looking at the email and I'm like, is this a scam? But I'm like, nah, it's not a scam. It's the internet provider. So of course I look at the email address it came from. It's literally the internet provider and they send me a gift card for $25 um, due to the interruption of service. Mind you, I don't have service with them yet. My service does not become active until June 29th. We are only in March, okay? My account set with them, the start date is set, but I don't have an account with you guys. So my service has not been interrupted because my service with y'all haven't started yet, right? So they send me a gift card and I can pick between Amazon, Macy's, all these places to redeem it. So I redeem my gift card for Amazon. Everything goes through. It sends the $25 to my Amazon account balance. And I'm just sitting there like, God, I know you're in this, right? Because there is no way. I know you're in this because I don't have service with them, nor has, has my service been interrupted because my service can't be interrupted. I don't have service with these people yet, but yet they're sending me recompense. <laughs> they're giving me recompense for something that hasn't happened to me. Right? I don't have an interruption. My internet's fine, okay? Uh, who was my internet with? Uh, Verizon? Some Somebody. I don't know who my internet is with, y'all. It's with Xfinity, right? I haven't had an internet issue, okay? Not over here, but thank you for the gift card. But I'm like, God, you're in this. I'm like, you're in this. And God gave me, he said two things to me. He gave me two words, air, A-I-R, air, and grief air and grief, right? And I'm like, air and grief? I'm like, what? Like, I'm not understanding. Air and grief. So I grabbed my Bible that I had already opened up to Second Kings earlier that morning. And I'm just like, okay, I just begin to read the story that I opened up to. And it's about Elijah and Elisha. Right. And as soon as I begin to read, guys, God began to speak. And what the Lord is saying, and this is going to make more sense when I read this, these scriptures to you guys. But what the Lord is saying is out of the air comes grief, but then blessings. Out of the air comes grief and then blessings. OK, and this is going to make more sense to you guys when I read this scripture. God is very strategic. And stuff may not always make sense to us, but God will make it make sense. Out of the air comes grief, but then blessings. And he said double, okay? Today is March, what, 25th. And on this 25th day, I received $25 of recompense for something I didn't even go through, okay? Something I didn't even go through. So here we have $25 given to me on the 25th of March. Okay, the Lord said, out of the air comes grief, but then blessings, double. So before I even get into this word so that you guys could understand it a little bit more, I want to say this. If God has told you to do something, you know where he's told you to go, what he's told you to do. Do not wait to move on it. When God has already told you it is set in stone, this is the person I'm sending you to. This is the place that I'm sending you to. This is the location that you're going to. This is the job that you're going to have. This is the person that you're going to marry. When God goes ahead of you, begin to prepare and put things in order so that you can accomplish what God has already spoken. If God is saying your marriage is around the corner, you should be in preparation for that thing. You should be getting your self-care together, your, yourself together mentally, physically, spiritually, in whatever areas you're lacking in, you should be getting that stuff together. You should be making room, organizing, getting the old stuff out, bringing the new in. If he's told you this is where you're going to be moving, you should be looking up places. Can I move in that place in July? I know it's March, but I'm going to go ahead and look anyway because God has already confirmed to me where I'm going. You should be proactive when God tells you this is what it is. It's your job to be proactive and begin to prepare for that thing. 
I'm not moving until June. I could have waited until May or even the beginning of June to start looking for somewhere to live. I began to look in February. In February. In most, most places, apartments, you can't even apply and get in if you're looking in February for June. It has to be within a two-month time frame that you're moving, not four months. But God knew where to lead me. He knew how to lead me, where to lead me. I had God's blessing because he's the one that told me, this is where I need you to go. So I was simply being proactive because he had already told me, go to the right. What am I waiting on? Start looking. Faith without works is dead. Start looking, put in the work. If God has told you to do something, because there's always a blessing in what God is telling you to do. Had I not looked for a place and had I not found that place, set that place in, in place, put that place in place, set the deposit down, did the applications. Then the guy sent me the, the internet information. He said, you can wait until you move in or you can set it up now. I was proactive. I went ahead and did it now. You sending me the information now. So let me go ahead and set it up and check that off my checkbox. And God looks at that, those, um, those, uh, help me Lord with the word. It's, it's a prophetic act, right? When God has spoken a prophecy to you and you go ahead of him, he sees that as a prophetic act of obedience. You begin to operate in what he's already spoken. There's no need for me to wait because I know what my father has already said. So what am I going to sit there and keep asking for confirmation after he's gave me a million? No. The last time when I asked God for confirmation of where to move and he said I had dull hearing, this is what I said. It was a wrap. I said, I ain't going to ask no more because I don't got no dull hearing, Lord. So let me not even ask no more. It was a wrap. So the only other thing for me to do was to move on what God said. And he says, out of the air comes grief, but then comes blessings. Double. God doesn't, he's not a God that only blesses one way. When God blesses, he does exceedingly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. So when he gave me the two words after I was blessed with this $25, gift, $25 gift card, on the 25th of March, 25, 25 double, okay, 25 in the Strong's Greeks Concordance is agapeo. It's symbolic of agape love, but it's in reference to us living a life that's pleasing to God and wanting to follow his will for us to show our love to him. Yes, he shows us his unconditional love, but the way we show God our unconditional love is by our acts of obedience by choosing to live a life filled with Christ that's in alignment with his will. That's how we show unconditional love for God is when we're willing to pick up our cross and walk to drop everything to live a life pleasing to God and be in alignment with his will. 25 is agapeo in the Strong's Greeks Concordance. And you guys can look that up. So I'm gonna read from 2 Kings uh, chapter two, verses one through 12. And you guys are going to see how good God is. Keep in mind, he gave me two words, air and grief. Okay. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, a whirlwind guys is a rapid rotation of air. That's what a whirlwind is. It's like a tornado, a rapid rotation of air. God gave me air and grief. Okay. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, by air, Elijah and Elisha were traveling to Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came to Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, yes, I know, but be quiet about it. Elijah said to him, Elisha, 
please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho approached, approached Elisha and said to him, do you know the Lord will take your master away from you today? And he answered, yes, I know it. Be quiet about it. Okay, so Elijah is trying to get Elisha to stay behind. Elisha is not having it. As the Lord lives, I'm a walk. I'm gonna stay with you this whole way. This is the will that God has for me. I'm not leaving. Yeah, I know you're getting ready to leave me. The people around me keep telling me you're getting ready to leave me, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna leave you. We gonna go in this together and I'm gonna see this thing out, right? <clears throat> Elijah said to him, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 50 men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood opposite to watch at a distance. And the two of them stood by the Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, his coat, and rolled it up and struck the waters. And they were divided this way and that so that the two of them crossed over on dry, dry ground. And when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He said, you have asked for a difficult thing. However, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you, but if not, it shall not be so. As they continued along and talked, behold, a chariot of fire with horses of fire appeared suddenly and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind, in air, okay? Keep in mind, a whirlwind is a rapid rotation of air. So Elijah was taken away from Elisha, right? Elisha saw it and cried out, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. And he no longer saw Elijah. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces in grief. What are the two words the Lord gave me prior to me even reading this word was air and grief. Elijah went up in a whirlwind, a whirlwind, which is air. And when he went up in that whirlwind, when God took him away from Elisha, what happened? Elisha began to grieve. Y'all better catch this. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that fell off him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and struck the waters and said, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he too had struck the waters, they divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. He said, where is the God of Elijah? He struck that water. God said, I'm right here. And he parted that, that way for Elisha. Y'all better catch this. When the sons of the prophets were watching opposite at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed down to the ground before him in respect. Out of that air, that whirlwind that the Lord God took Elijah up in came grief for Elisha. But out of that grief came a double blessing, a double anointing on Elisha's head, on Elisha's life. God is saying out of the air, Translation, when things are taken from you in thin air, out of thin air, it's like one minute it was there, the next minute it was swept away, comes grief. You begin to grieve over it. But behind that, as long as you are walking in the will of God, okay, as long as you are walking in the will of God, God has a blessing on the other side. So out of the air comes grief, but then double blessings is what God is speaking. And I pray that this makes sense for who it's for. In Job's life, out of thin air, everything fell apart. His kids died. His, his fortunes were taken away from him. Everything happened out of thin air. 
And when things were taken from him out of thin air, he began to grieve. But after that grieving process, he got double. God is saying out of the air comes grief, but then blessings. Out of the air comes grief, but then double. I was obedient. I don't know anybody in this state or city that God is sending me to. I'm not going with nobody. I don't know anybody there. I've never even been to this city before. I'm just being obedient to what God has told me, to where God has told me to go. I was just being obedient. I was like, Elisha. Elijah was like, go, I'm gonna go over here, stay here. Elisha was like, as, as, as long as the Lord lives, I'm gonna follow you wherever you go. I ain't going nowhere. We in this together. It's God's will for us to do this together. So I'm in it. And he went everywhere Elijah went. He went everywhere. He didn't miss a beat. And he knew people kept telling him, your master is about to be taken away from you. Yes, I know, but be quiet about it. Let, let me live in this moment. Let me stay in this moment. As long as God has me here, I'm going to take it, everything in. Be quiet about it. He goes to the next place. People come to him. You know, this is about to be taken away from you. Yes, I know, but be quiet. Let me see what God has for me in this moment. And many of you guys can relate. Out of the thin air, things were taken away from you, but you submitted to God. You fell at his feet. You submitted to his will. You stood for whatever God was telling you to do. And out of the thin air came grief. You had to grieve this thing. But now God is saying after that grief comes blessings, comes double, triple for some of you guys, quadruple for some of you guys. But out of the thin air, there's grief and then there's blessings is what God is speaking. I can't make this up. When he first gave me air and grief, I was like, what? Air and grief? I just got a gift card. I don't know nothing about no air and grief. But when I began to read what God had me open to early this morning, there was a whirlwind and then Elisha began to do what? He tore his clothes and began to grieve. And God made sure both of these words were in this set of scriptures for me to understand what he was talking about. And somebody better hear this and you better catch this spiritually. Things were taken from you out of thin air. One minute it was here, the next minute it looked like that marriage was blown away in a whirlwind. It looks like your finances were blown away in a whirlwind. Your health was blown away in a whirlwind. Your mom, the loss of your mom, the loss of your dad, the loss of your child through that miscarriage, through that stillbirth, it was here one minute, the next minute it was gone with the air, gone in the whirlwind, and you begin to grieve. But because you submitted to God and stayed in his will, and you wanted to hear what God wanted to do with that, because you submitted to God's will and you showed God your agape -o love, you showed him that agape, -o. not agape, the word is agape, -o. and it's submitting to a life of Christ, dying to self and living for God, submitting to his will. Let me tell you guys exactly what it says. Agape, -o, it's spelled A-G-A-P-A-O. It's in the Strong's Greeks Concordance and the number is 25. And it means to love, to wish well, to take pleasure in. And it says to live through Christ by embracing God's will and choosing his choices and obeying them through his power refers to agapeo. It's God's way of loving. Actively doing what the Lord prefers by his power and direction. Setting everything else down and exhibiting agapeo love towards God by living a life and choosing a life of his choosing for you, obeying him through his power. That's agapeo. It's to love, but to live a life of love for God. And because you chose to do that for whoever this word is for, out of that air came grief, but now there's blessings. 
And there's double for some of you, triple for some of you, quadruple for some of you. It does not stop. The door that he's opening due to your obedience and your unfailing love, your willingness, your reverence towards him, your willingness to obey him, choosing his choices, even when it didn't make sense. Even when people were coming up to you like they were coming up to Elijah, you know this ain't gonna happen. You know this, this, this ain't gonna happen right now. You know this person married another person. You know your finances ain't gonna get right. Yeah, okay, I hear what you are saying, but be quiet. Let me stay in this moment and see what God has for me. Those same people that came to Elisha telling him, you know God is about to take your master. They're the same people that had a look at him and see that he had been giving a given a double anointing and they came and bowed down to him. God will make your enemies your footstool. He will make those people who knew you were experiencing a loss. Some people threw that loss in your face. Oh, you over here praising God, but you done, had, you done lost all your money. What God you serving? Let, let you go through that divorce. Let you go through that bankruptcy. I'm serving the almighty God, the only one. God didn't promise me that it would be perfect. He just promised me he would never leave me. So just because I'm going through this, just because I'm having my Job moment does not mean God is not going to bless me on the other side. It does not mean that God doesn't love me. It does not mean that God has walked away from me. It's actually opposite. God loves me with his whole heart. God is allowing me to go through this to show me whatever it is that there's to learn in this situation. He's using these moments to bless me. Well, how do you know that? Because all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and walk according to purpose. Not some things, all things. So let God work. No, it wasn't fun for me. No, the loss wasn't fun for me. Out of the air, out of the air came grief. But I, after the grief, it's double. It's blessings on the other side. All things work for my good. All things are working for your good. I didn't deserve that gift card. I didn't have an interruption in no service, but I have had interruptions in my life and I ch still chose to worship God. God was showing me in that moment, I'm rewarding you for being obedient. I told you what to do and you went ahead and you, you, you organized it, you put it together. God was saying, I'm showing you that I, there's blessings in the direction that I'm telling you to go in, even if you don't understand it. There's blessings when we choose to honor God, when he tells us something and we paved the way for the promise. We paved the way for what he's spoken. You better John the Baptist that thing and pave the way when God speaks, pave the way for that promise. And paving the way isn't easy. Paving the way for Jesus when John the Baptist had to pave the way, it wasn't easy. People looking at him like, who, is, who are you talking about that's coming and on the way? We don't see nobody. That didn't stop him from paving the way. He had a calling on his life. Pave the way for those promises because out of your obedience comes blessings. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I did not deserve that gift card. I didn't have an inconvenience in my internet service, but God was like, due to your inconveniences that you've had to go through throughout this walk, there's blessings when you get to the other side. There's blessings as you pave the way. Some of you guys have no idea what type of blessings you're walking into, but God is saying out of the air came grief, but then there's blessings. There's a double anointing. There's a double blessing. We see this all throughout the Bible, but he specifically highlighted Elijah and Elisha. Elisha got a double anointing. Job got double blessings. But out of the thin air, they both experienced loss. They both went through a griefing process, but there was blessings on the other side. And it's the same for you and for me. So I just wanted to get on and share that with you guys. I pray that uh, this inspires somebody today. I pray that this is confirmation today. And yeah, that's the word, guys. That's the word. So I love you and I hope you have a blessed day. Bye, guys.